Martin and Pam. This is an example of colorism and them programming us to believe that dark skinned women are more aggressive. That's the character that they gave her. She's beautiful, but they give her this personality, this ongoing thing that would make her less attractive. So this is that this is that subtle programming that that stays with you from childhood to adulthood to where that's how we perceive. And then that's how I feel some that's the role that some adopt as a sign of strength. Players Club. Here we have another example of colorism. Uh, the way that they like to portray dark-skinned women from the 80s to the 90s to the present is either over aggressive, they have an attitude, or, or should be promiscuous, or just outright, or have a propensity for criminality. So here, she's shady. The cousin helps her, and what's she doing? She's sleeping with the cousin behind her back. Players Club. Movies from the 90s. I told you guys that they stereotype the dark-skinned black women. We've been seeing it in movies and TV shows for 20 years nonstop. But then, you know, when we get this type of treatment, or we dish it out, we act like we don't know why. We've been watching it our whole lives. Lean on me. Who was his biggest detractor? Who was his biggest detractor? If you know, you know. If you're not old enough to remember this movie, then I don't know what to say. But this is another example of, once again, um, they depict the dark-skinned woman with an artist attitude. She's not promiscuous, but she's shady, and she would rather side with the, with the white fire chief than to let the black principal lead. This, this is a tough one. Because of what's going on, because of what Monique has been doing in real life, art is imitating life for us, life imitating art. This character speaks for itself. This was the most terrible character. But once again, in black America, you get rewarded by mainstream society when you either go against what's traditional, if you do the opposite of what your grandmother would do, and you'll get elevated if you or, or if you embody the stereotypes as a black woman, or if you perpetuate or uplift the stereotypes within black men, or if you celebrate celebrate criminality. Tasha from Power. Once again, here we go. We perpetuate the stereotype, the negative. This is a decade of food. She's uh, shown as promiscuous, and she showed us shady or prone to criminality that's the definition of tasha but with this with the new message now is kill the dad so that's you that's the theme you'll see so you'll see that in this show that's the theme of this show is to to in order for her to leave the dad has to die that's a recurring theme that you'll see watch there is a reoccurring theme that in order for the matriarch to be powerful that the dad has to die. Look at this, Raising Canaan. This is the same franchise that's doing the same thing twice in a spinoff. Killing to killing the dad, which will allow the matriarch the kingdom. And this show also, the brother, once again, is a fool. She has to lead because the brothers are weak. And the other one is sniffing under a white girl. So we got stereotype on top of stereotype compounding. But once again, it's the same thing. They depict the dark-skinned woman with the attitude, promiscuous, shady, prone to criminality, and uplifting the negative black men. It's, it's crazy. Not everybody can remember this one. This the sister from How to Be a Player, dark-skinned woman, once again. She fits the same stereotype that we've been doing for two, three, four, five decades now. She has the attitude. She's not prone to promiscuity, but she's being shady. She's trying to go out of her way to expose her brother when she could just let him be mind her business. But she feels it's her duty to ruin his life as as some type of crusade or warrior. So another example. I told you, now that I've put it in your face, you can no longer ignore the recurrent theme. The way that they depict our dark skinned, beautiful black ladies is either with an attitude promiscuous she's either shady conspiring or she is prone to criminality either that or at the very least she celebrates black male criminality that's it that's the only way you could be successful and you have to perpetuate one of those to be owned you have to either be a buffoon of yourself or or talk negative and to the of the opposing gender as a rapper if you speak negatively of black women you're you're promoted and as a lady on talk shows you're promoted if you say that black men are trash it's the same thing the dark woman having an attitude trope is so prevalent that they did it they did it to tisha uh uh campbell uh, uh excuse me they got her in two popular series twice with the same attitude it's, it's crazy
we have been allowing ourselves to be depicted in a negative life and then celebrating it. Look at this, poetic justice. Uh, the darker skinned woman in the film, once again, has one of the four criteria that uh, that's the only one that they will allow. She has, they gave her attitude. She is promiscuous, she's shady. I done showed you almost three to four decades of them keep perpetuating the same narrative and parameters of how they want to depict darker skinned women. It's not, that's why people look at dark skinned women that way. Cause we accept that role in the movies. We watch it, we celebrate it, we champion it. And then think that it doesn't carry over in the real life. That's why we have to control and preserve our image.